Welcome everybody. This is SharePoint Community Call. We're going to have a really nice community call as a monthly summary today with a special topic. So my name is Cesar Juvonen. I'm a program manager from the OneDrive SharePoint platform team and our team is responsible on the development experience. But typically in these monthly community calls, it's not necessarily all about development. We might touch development topics, but it's really around more and more around the features and capabilities as well. And so we're kind of trans transforming the monthly community calls away from the deep dive development ex extensibility to more on understanding what's, a, what's possible. Like today, we're, we're kind of concentrate today on the Microsoft Search UX. Now, quick recap uh, on our community. We have multiple different community calls. We have SharePoint Framework community call. We have an M365 general dev special interest group community calls as well. And we have monthly community calls for SharePoint. On top of this, we have plenty of other calls as well. And we'll come to those slightly later actually on the slides as well. But the whole point of having this many calls means that you can target your based on your interest, those calls which are interesting for you. And then at the same time, there's a lot of content available which you can access from the recordings. So it doesn't mean that you need to join all of these calls. You can always have a look on the recording afterwards as well. So that's one way of handling uh, the situation. Now, quick recap on the assets what we have. We have multiple different YouTube channels. We have open source, uh, kitshappen.com, SharePoint, BMP, and Office Dev, sample galleries, and plenty of them, and open source. If you're wondering on all of these assets which are available, how, how do I go to get access on everything? It's AKMS M365 BNB. That site has access on all of the different locations and all of the different uh, addresses. Now, quick recap uh, on, the, on the SharePoint roadmap, because these questions came up uh, during the chat. Um, so let's talk about this one briefly. So right now what we're working on is a SharePoint Framework 1.11, which will be uh, what's the primary reason why we're working on it is to make sure that the SharePoint Framework support for App Source and Office Store is in a, in a optimal situation. So we're making small adjustments related on and it's sorry metadata or the generation and making sure that all of that is working. We also are enabling task modules to be actually exposed to say SharePoint framework solution. So that's one of the, the options here as well. Uh, in general, we're also working on improved Microsoft Graph APIs. So the taxonomy and content type uh, Graph APIs, uh, REST APIs, Graph APIs, those are coming up uh, within the June as well. So they plan to go to the GA or V1 in the, in the June timeframe. That was the original time discussion uh, back in May. There might be some delays on that one, but but it's happening relatively soon as well. The CSM.NET standard, uh, we talked about that one before the call starts as well, but basically the idea is to get it out during this month. Uh, so we are in the final leg of testing. Uh, we validated that uh, as well. Uh, we actually demonstrated that two weeks ago uh, it by uh, BERT uh, in M365 General Special Interest Group call as well. So it is already working. We're just doing final uh, optimizations and hopefully get it out by end of this month. And that's really the objective. Um, there's also going to be more branding settings in portals. So, so improved headers, footers, uh, all of those settings uh, from a branding perspective. And in general, uh, there's a, a better improvements on the Microsoft Teams side. So for Microsoft Teams, it's absolutely a focus area for us as well uh, in the in the SharePoint and OneDrive platform team or well in SharePoint and OneDrive in general. Um, so Teams integration improvements, content security policy uh, in the pipeline, faster in the dev loop of our planning. We've been trying to get to there for quite a long time, not yet, and more extensions in the SharePoint portals. We talked about those quite a few times already, but no timelines for those at this point. Now, quick pointers from a user voice perspective which is really cool. Uh, so we have three of the top 10 uh, items uh, are going to be closed pretty soon. So the support for .NET Core, actually it's support for .NET Standard, which will enable CSM to be used in .NET Core, uh, is coming relatively soon as well. So that's really, really cool. The Add for Management Data Terms for Operations and REST API, it's going to be Craft APIs, and that's going to help us uh, on, on you to use these operations uh, uh, more efficiently. And then the third one is to add support for SharePoint Framework Solution packages and App Store Store. So that's planned to happen in a mid July timeframe. So all of these three uh, are getting closed quite soon. And for the other ones, please keep on voting. Please keep on influencing. You keep on uh, giving your feedback uh, for us. So we need to understand what are these, what are the, the functionalities which are important for you.
Now, uh, related on uh, the community work and related on the open source initiatives and work what we're doing here, uh, please, uh, if you don't feel comfortable and don't feel bad about it, uh, all of this GitHub and contributing in open source, editing documents or submitting uh, changes on the on the GitHub document, uh, not well, official docs, might be confusing and might be scary. And that's why we have this AKMS Sharing is Caring initiative uh, driven by or led by David Warner and then Hugo Bernier. And, and they actually have, uh, well, not one-to-one, -one, but live sessions, instructor-led uh, sessions, where they help you to actually get started on contributing in open source, understanding what is a GitHub, and understanding how to contribute on the dev, uh, dev docs or the documentation modifications in general, not just dev docs in general, because that the, the system is exactly the same across Microsoft. So the next time uh, the sessions is June 18th, 19th, and 22nd. Uh, and if you go to AKMS Sharing is Caring, you can actually register to those sessions uh, using the registration form available on that page. So please reach out if you need any help on that. Now, one of the things what I wanted to also promote is our PMP Weekly. We had released the latest PMP Weekly today, where we talk about uh, the latest news from Microsoft 365 level, not just the dev stuff, but also in other areas as well. And then typically we have some sort of a topic or visitors and MVPs, community members in those calls. And uh, today we released a, a uh, PMP Weekly episode 86. Uh, where we have, uh, together with me and Valdek, we had David Warner and then Paolo Bialorzi as the visitors because we wanted to address a common question what people keep on asking is that, well, how do you make, how do you work so much or how do you make that, that many things happening? And what is the secret of these people being active in the community? What are they gaining out of being active on the community? Um, and obviously, we could have had quite a few others uh, active MVPs in this channel as well, but um, David and, and Paolo are sharing their perspective on this thinking as well. So why are they sharing and what's, what are they gaining out of uh, doing that as well? Now, uh, the June version uh, of the community update uh, went live 30 minutes ago or 60 minutes ago uh, uh, at the AKMS MJ65 PMP, well, or actually in the blog posts. Um, and in there, we kind of call out all of the contributors, we call out all of the companies who have helped us. And I just realized that it, there's a one logo missing from that slide, which is updated on the upcoming slide. So, uh, so basically, a lot of people, a lot of companies, again, helping us on a monthly to monthly basis. So thank you for being part of this uh, journey and helping others in the community to succeed as well. Uh, we know that people are uh, looking in the, your companies also because your company allows you, your employees, uh, to contribute and being active in the open source side. So that's a really good benefit. Uh, for well it's a win-win for everybody when we do this together uh, from a uh, individual user perspective and these are all of the users who contributed in our open source initiatives and projects within the last month so within a, a may time frame um, and i needed to reduce the font size again and i needed to really make it uh, full size on the on the slide so the number of people contributing is is all the time growing so thank you for being here and being active and thank you for helping others uh, in the community uh, because that's what we want to do we want to make sure that others can uh, can benefit from our knowledge and then they can help us when we have hard time or trying to figure out what what how to make x and y and z happen and that's how it comes to be a win-win and everybody wins from the round of thinking from the company perspective, uh, like mentioned, uh, there's a one new company there, which is Peace Portals 365, uh, with the logo in here. If you are one of the contributors uh, and your company is not here, we need to have your logo shared with us with the permissions of using that logo. So we are not allowed to actually use your company logo unless there's an explicit email or a message where you explicitly give us the permissions to do that. And that's a kind of a legal requirement on here. And that's why we have a subset of all of the companies which are mentioned in the user side on the other side as well. Now, uh, from Microsoft side, plenty of people as well. Um, and the one thing what I wanted to know, uh, call out here, even Dan Holm, who's our director of marketing, one of the directors of in our marketing side, was contributing in the documentation updates uh, pretty recently, so thank you. But thank you everybody from Microsoft side being active on this side as well. Now, I think uh, it is time, and we're not too much badly uh, behind of the schedule because I was rushing, and I do apologize on that one. But I wanted to make sure that we have time uh, for the actual topic of the day, which is the Microsoft Search UX customizations, so search box verticals and refiners. So I think it's URT who's going to start, unless I'm completely mistaken. URT, take it away. Thank you.
so hi everyone uh, really uh, great to be talking to you guys um so today the plan was we talk through the uh, microsoft search user experience we are essentially talking about uh, uh, you know the customization that we are doing for microsoft search result page now there uh, when we, when i talk about microsoft search result page i am talking about the search result page that you generally see when you're in sharepoint home or office.com you go to the search box hit the query and then you know you have a search result page load up now again even here there are a lot of components which are involved um this particular part is focused on two aspects one is verticals which you see highlighted on top over here which is essentially uh, a way uh, to define the types of results which are shown in the search result page and then you have your um, filters or refiners how they are generally known as uh, from the classic search uh, world and this helps users you know to define a way for uh, users to uh, further narrow down results on certain properties so these uh, are the two key focus for the talk as of now and um, here uh, let me actually talk about the uh, key customization features that we are working on so these are uh, you know the asks that we have heard from customers especially for those who want to move from uh, you know classic search or who have been used to the uh, features which were ab available there so two key things that uh, we are actually working on is firstly um, allowing edit of your existing out of box uh, verticals which are present so the verticals like all files people sites etc being able to do some kind of uh, modifications over there and then the second thing that we are working on and we are planning to uh, you know enable is uh, allowing adding of new custom verticals now uh, some of you or many of you may already know that uh, this is in part already available in preview uh, as a part of the microsoft graph uh, connectors uh, program where you can actually add custom verticals but um, we are taking the next step over here by having this available for sharepoint content as well and then the next big thing that uh, we are doing is uh, you know uh, custom filters now you may already notice and i'll do a deep dive into this part that the filter design itself has actually changed we are moving uh, from the right hand side uh, pane to actually top of the page and we are also doing work to add the have the ability to add custom filters so without any further ado let's actually go into the experience so let me show you the experience that we are planning and uh, that will give you a much better and good idea about uh, the kind of changes which are there so in this case um, let's so this is going to be an experience walk through where um, like you know i'll be talking about uh, the changes that we're doing so imagine that you are uh, some a user who is on sharepoint home and uh, who starts off with uh, writing a query on your um, uh, on your search box and you're looking for something like a contoso field re research spec you hit enter um as soon as you hit enter now this is sort of uh, the uh, experience that you will see now immediately off the bat you might notice that there are a couple of changes right here on the top so let's sort of zoom into this and uh, see so there are two aspects one is the verticals on top and the second one is filters which have actually changed so let's further actually look into what the changes are so first i'll be focusing on the top bar which is the verticals now the kind of uh, features that we are enabling is firstly you may notice here that you don't actually see the sites vertical so this is one feedback that we have heard that you know in some cases there are certain verticals which are perhaps maybe uh, not needed for your organization or um, you know for a specific uh, maybe site as well so in that case we are allowing the capability to uh, disable some of the uh, uh, existing verticals the other uh, thing that you might notice over here is this vertical called as sharepoint news which is generally actually the news vertical so uh, there is also the capability to rename the news uh, uh, to rename some of these uh, existing verticals to you know fit the need of your organization other than that you might also notice that there are two other uh, verticals over here which are like research and outreach and these are additional custom verticals which have actually now been added um based on your requirements uh moving uh from uh, top uh, one uh, one level down you see that there are filters so it's file type and like date is something which is already there but the design has changed now when it is moved to top of the page but then apart from this you also have the uh, capability of adding additional custom filters like department and author and i'll uh, you know go through the kind of experience which is present uh, on this in a bit 
so this is the uh, focus. So let's see that apart from this, uh, you know, verticals that, that have been edited, you also have this research custom uh, vertical which is available. So going back to our user scenario, uh, in case if the user is actually looking, in this case, you see the user is looking for a research-related spec, and you do have a research-related custom vertical present over here. So one quick thing that the user will now be able to do is go to this particular custom vertical tab and actually see the relevant narrowed down results. Now, this is one great way of finding uh, information. Other than that, um, so imagine if uh, the custom vertical is not what you're going for, then we go back to our all tab and then we start now looking at these uh, filters which have been added. Now, in these filters, let's look into the department filter, let's say. So, here we are adding the capability of uh, having filters so you have different kind of controls like you know single select multi-select which will be available these are essentially filters which are working off of uh, definable managed properties as of now so the uh, user will have the capability of uh, you know selecting some of these filters clicking on apply and you know your uh, page results uh, your results will refresh the values which have been chosen will be uh, shown here as pills and you'll have the options of deselecting them right from here or clearing them all if that's what is needed. And you obviously also have the capability of adding, um, of using other, you know, filters along with the department as well. So in this case, if it's author, you can, you know, select the other authors that you're looking for, click on apply and then further narrow down your results. So this is a great way of actually finding the results that you're looking for. Now, moving on, uh, so uh, just to go back this, uh, so the earlier one which you saw was on the uh, existing all vertical where you are able to add custom filters, but this particular capability is also available for other, uh, you know, custom filters like research. So now um, I want to actually walk you through the admin aspect of how this is set up as well to sort of, uh, you know, go over the context of how this can be done from uh, the administration perspective. Okay, so this is, uh, so uh, what I'm showing to you right now is on the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, which is essentially um, at a, uh, the setting which is ha happening at an organization level for things like your SharePoint home, office.com, etc. The experience, uh, you'll have like a similar kind of experience even at a site collection level, uh, which is applicable for each and every site. So. Uh, immediately, first you will notice that in, within the Microsoft Search uh, administration portal itself, you have a customization tab where you can actually go and see verticals. So now you'll be able to see all your existing verticals also which are present like all files, people, news, etc. And here the capabilities of let's say disabling a vertical will be present. So I'm going to take the example of this research vertical, which we just saw. Now, in this case, the vertical is already created. And what we're going to do is add a uh, filter to it. So once you click on the uh, research uh, vertical over here, on the right hand side, you see all the information which is actually used to create this vertical. And um, similar to this, you'll have the similar information present for existing verticals as well. So you can edit the name, you can uh, change the like, you know, the query which has been added, or you can go ahead and add a new filter. So once you click on filters, you're taken to a wizard kind of a view where you have a capability of adding a filter. So once you click on um, add a filter, you will be shown a list of refinable uh, managed properties from which you can select uh, your uh, property. So in this case, we want to create an author filter. So we'll select the author property over here and uh, move on to the next step. And then uh, within this step, then you have the options of viewing some of the, uh, you know, um, information about this. So in this case, it's a string type uh, filter. And apart from that, you have the ability to actually select the type of interface that you want. As of now today, we are uh, first starting out with a list of preset sort of interfaces where um, the options will be something like a single select or a multi-select. Um, and you won't have the ability to design like uh, completely uh, uh, customize the way you want it. That's how we are sort of starting off. So you select this, this type of information, you click on done, and then your uh, filter is added over here and then the rest of the steps for actually just saving the vertical is present. And so when you go back, um, when you move on to the next step, 
and yeah here you go so then on your um, uh, on your research vertical a filter author uh, author filter will be added this is from a uh, experience walkthrough perspective what um, I, I wanted to show so um, so just to summarize we are uh, so these are all the features that we're working on as a next step uh, we are planning for a private preview for all of these features in the coming quarter so you have things like uh, ability to uh, have custom filters in existing verticals on custom verticals for SharePoint, uh, editing existing verticals or adding, uh, you know, custom verticals for SharePoint content. All of these um, experiences that I just spoke about, this will be a part of the private preview. They will be available on both tenant and uh, site scope. There are also other things that we're continuing to work on, which is at a high level, you know, result type uh, support for SharePoint content and custom verticals so that you can design your own uh, layout and also custom filter support for uh, connector content. So these will also be coming up uh, soon. And um, lastly, the main call of action that I have from this audience is uh, to actually uh, you know, um, uh, sign up for the private preview. So we are opening up the registrations for the private preview as well. So we have the link over here. I'll paste uh, the link in the chat as well. What we would love to, uh, you know, have is uh, folks sign up for the private preview so that we can actually take it, this to you, see uh, how well it works for your scenarios and get good feedback from all of you. So, yeah, this was the content from uh, my end. Excellent. Thank you, Yorty. We will add the link on the uh, notes and in the recording and in the YouTube video. If you're watching this on YouTube tomorrow or later after this recording, uh, um, there will be a reference back on the blog post where all of these links are, so you can actually get access on that. Uh, get Karen to say hi. I'm sharing my screen. Can you guys oh, hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Excellent. Amazing. And now we're getting you, Karen, on, on your uh, extensibility story. I wanted to uh, talk to you briefly about the search box changes that are coming as part of Microsoft Search in OneDrive and SharePoint. Uh, my name is Karam Ujaturk. I'm a program manager with the OneDrive and SharePoint team, and I look after mostly the integration with Microsoft Search. And here are some of the things that you can look forward to. Over the next quarter, um, we are hoping to introduce a scoping control into the search box. And uh, this will help you see uh, the context of where you're going to be searching uh, easier and then switch this context as necessary uh, uh, if needed. So um, this will be available in OneDrive for Business. So you it will show up like this, as you see on the on the left, where you know, you'll be able to kind of scope searches to current folder or only my drive or it can be like the all files in the organization. And then there's the whole organization affordance, which lets you jump out into the Enterprise Search Center um, in the um, SharePoint start page um, to kind of search across all types of files, not just files, but also list items, pages, sites, etc. cetera, um, whatever uh, occurs uh, in, uh, in the Enterprise Search Center. And of course, the connector uh, information uh, that is also becoming uh, added as uh, custom verticals as well. So that's kind of uh, uh, giving users a better sense of where they're searching. So this is a big change for OneDrive for Business because today there's only one way to search in OneDrive for Business. And that's like a, a hybrid model of um, the files I recently worked on or files shared with me plus the things in my OneDrive for Business. And this will kind of provide a little more clarity, hopefully, for those different scopes and, and provide uh, the, the folder scoping, which is kind of important. Um, the other thing we're excited about for OneDrive for Business is the shared libraries that appear in OneDrive for Business. You couldn't search in those. Um, and with this affordance, you, you'll also be able to use the current folder affordance to go and search for things um, in those areas. And the scoping control is also coming to uh, the search boxes in SharePoint. So if you're in a library or if you're in the site, um, you'll be able to scope things to the current site, to all sites in the hub if a site is connected or associated with a hub. And again, the same whole organization concept is here where you'll be able to uh, jump to the same place. So it's kind of this universal universality of uh, Microsoft Search. Wherever you start from, there's a contextual thing and then there's the ability to jump to the whole organization uh, as needed. And similarly, current folder, current library, we're working a library or a list. 
Um, and then you'll be able to jump to the site, the hub, and the whole organization, again, uh, using the scoping control there. So some things to call out. This uh, kind of works for scoping wider and not uh, narrower uh, or lower. So you can go from site to hub to whole organization, but you can't, once you're in the hub, you can't really drill down into a site because you don't have a way of selecting that site. Hopefully that's obvious. We have a setting called search scope, which we will I will uh, remind everybody about in uh, two slides over, that allows you to say, hey, I want uh, my site to start searching at the hub level or at the whole organization level. And if any of these settings are set, then you'll see only those options here. So if you set it to hub, for example, for a site that is associated with the hub, you'll only see the all sites in hub and whole organization scopes. You won't see the current site scope. And then if you set it to whole organization, again, uh, whole organization will be the scope and you won't see the scoping control since you can't change it further down. And then the suggestions that we show will match the scope selected. So if you're switching over to current folder, for example, in a library or in your OneDrive, you'll see suggestions from that scope. If you're switching to hub or whole organization, you'll get the suggestions for that, for that uh, selection. Um, so it will it will match the suggestions that appear under the search box will match those things. And there's a subtle line here uh, that you may notice. So this is kind of like, hey, you're jumping out into another experience indicator for the scoping control. So if you're in OneDrive for Business and you select whole organization and you submit a search, it will open a new tab, take you to SharePoint start page so that you can get to that enterprise search experience. Um, similarly, if you're in a folder uh, in a library in SharePoint sites and then you switch to uh, current site or old sites, we'll open a new tab and go to the site search experience or the hub search experience and leave the, the library experience behind. So that's kind of a subtle indicator that you'll switch to a new tab for, for these scopes here. And if you set a custom results page uh, for the new search box, uh, those, that will continue to work. So we will always take you to the custom results page but uh, you'll have to uh, punch in the scope accordingly and then switch that up uh, if, you, if you need to. All right, moving on. The other feature I wanted to tell you about is uh, Microsoft Search for Classic Sites. Um, so this is also, this was expected um, in this quarter that we're in, but we're in, July, uh, in June and uh, you may have been suspicious that uh, you haven't heard that this was coming already. We are having a little delay there um, with the rollout of the Microsoft Search search box, but we are now testing this inside Microsoft. So uh, I expect this to roll out to uh, targeted release in the third quarter of the year and then uh, to, to broader production customers as well. So the concept here is relatively simple, uh, but it's a little difficult to pull off. Uh, so but I'll try to explain it and then I'll go into the next slide and go through some of the details of uh, how you can kind of manage this experience. So uh, the idea here is that, hey, if you have classic sites that uh, are not customized, there's no reason they shouldn't be using Microsoft Search. We are already indexing all the content in your classic sites in Microsoft Search. And ideally, you'll be able to use the Microsoft Search experience, which offers uh, a little uh, better relevance and ranking experience and is consistent with the modern experiences that you're getting on your classic sites too. So what we're doing to this end is if you have a, a classic team site uh, with publishing not turned on at the site level and no discernible custom master page, in those cases, we will by default try to remove the search box that's built into the classic master page and then add the Microsoft Search search box uh, to the top of the page. And as your users are using this, it will kind of work uh, the same way as uh, the, the search box that you'd find in a modern site, and it will take you to the modern Microsoft Search search results, go up to that site and, and show you the, the, the results from there. Now, of course, you may have multiple reasons why you wouldn't want that. For example, if you've customized your search experience and you know you, you've added uh, experiences like custom display templates, etc., et and, and you don't want to uh, uh, switch your uh, experience, you'll be able to opt out of that experience so that classic pages are not touched. 
or of course uh, showing the using the the um, the concepts that Jyoti presented uh, earlier, you would be able to also implement some of those customizations in modern uh, and and start using those uh, as well. So there's a there's you know a, a bit of a, a optionality there. We are not going to try to automatically upgrade um, um, sites that uh, have publishing turned on at the site level or have a, a custom uh, master page with a, with a different name than seattle.master or a, um, a oslo.master and uh, we will not attempt to ma uh, upgrade those since they may have other customizations in there that, that we don't want to break uh, with the custom master pages. In those cases, uh, everything will continue to work, but you will be able to opt in uh, if you still want the uh, Microsoft Search uh, experience there using our search box in navbar setting. So how would that work? Let me quickly go over that and then I'll try to take any questions if we get time or I can follow up with questions uh, later. So uh, as you know, uh, we have two uh, web and site collection level settings uh, that, is, that is available now actually. So this is available for use that you can set these settings today. Uh, the first one is the search scope, uh, web.search scope setting. Um, this is also available through several helpers um, in the PMP uh, PowerShell, but this is the one that allows you to set the default scope to be at the site level, uh, at the hub level, or the whole organization level for a given SharePoint site. So this continues to work. Uh, there isn't much uh, change here. Uh, it kind of has a bearing on the scoping control that we, we just covered earlier. The second one has more bearing on the uh, the upgrade behavior that we're going to get for classic pages, and that's the web dot search box in navbar as well as the site dot search box in navbar. So this is the site collection setting, and this is the 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 the, uh, the site setting, the web SP web setting, and this will override uh, the broader thing. If this is set to default, or, or if this is set to default, you can override it using the site collection level. But if the site has set something, uh, one of these settings, and the web can override that by setting one of these uh, settings explicitly as well. So it kind of gives you a bit of flexibility in, in how to combine those two, the site collection level and uh, the site level. So zero is the default setting, and this is the behavior that I was telling you about where um, we will try to upgrade the team sites that don't have the publishing feature turned on or don't use a custom master page. And the search box will just move to the top, uh, will be removed from the page, and then you're starting to use um, the setting there. Um, and any sites that have the pu site publishing feature turned on or have a custom master page, they do not, uh, have a, they do not see any change, basically. Option number one is all pages, including classic pages. And this is basically an opt-in, uh, if you will, for those sites that didn't get to upgrade. And uh, this will help you to, to move to that model uh, of having all pages always try to use the search box in the nav bar, even if they're classic and even if you know some of these features are turned on. And uh, it will kind of be an opt-in into the modern experience for those cases. The number two option is an opt out. So if you're in the first, uh, if you're in the bucket where you're in a team site, you're using classic pages, but you're not using the publishing feature at the site level and you don't have a custom master page and you want to make sure that you continue to use the classic experience, this is your opt out. You set this for your web or your site collection and uh, none of the none of those sites with this set or the, the, the site collection with this set will be upgraded. To Microsoft Search. So this is kind of an opt-out uh, model. And then last but not least, I know some of uh, us uh, and some customers want to make sure that there is no search box and they want to provide their own search box or they want to uh, disable search altogether uh, for a given site or site collection. And this last setting is to hide the search box that we provide in the street uh, navigation bar. And when you set this, uh, then we will not emit the search box into the page and you'll be free to do whatever you want using SharePoint framework extensions or any other mechanism that you may be using. Note that this will only affect modern pages, uh, classic pages, because you already have a way to, to modify the master page. We're not going to touch those and, and try to do anything there. 
So this is kind of a, a hide the search box in modern pages and I'll take care of the classic pages to do as I see fit uh, type of situation. All right, so that's kind of what I wanted to cover. And I think we have zero time for questions, but... Pretty um, much, I'll... pretty much. The, the only question, Karen, was that uh, the kind of a thing which came from Frank Cornu and a few others is the extensibility story. Um, yes. the, are the, the new controls, are they web parts or are they something which can be connected to other web parts as well? Uh, if you or, or somebody can actually answer on that. So are they... If they're web parts, then they have web part connections, and then people can extend the experience through that model. Do you mean in the refiners and and? Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, Jyoti. As far as I know, feel free to jump in, but they are not web parts, right? This is basically a configuration that the search page reads, and uh, it is kind of a component that Microsoft uh, runs. So it's not uh, uh, they're not individual web parts on that page. It's kind of a monolithic search results page that has those components on it and reads a configuration yes. from the admin experience. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so yeah, and, and URT answered that, uh, that there's no customization at that point uh, for now, but uh, it might be a good, uh, let's say, a suggestion to have an extensibility point in those things so you can add then potentially add new web parts on a page and so you wouldn't actually have to override what we have and out of the box you just extend what we have out of the box um, so but again that's coming later so yeah and the option of course with the custom results pages of course is still there and and, and available to make full use of the SharePoint canvas, you know, to use uh, modern web parts, including, of course, the PMP search web parts uh, that this audience is very familiar with. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Karim. Thank you, URT. We are over time already, so unfortunately no Q&A uh, within this one. Um, but uh, just to recap, the recording will be available in 24 hours in our Microsoft 365 SharePoint community YouTube channel. The next M365 channel day of call is on this Thursday. We're going to talk about CSAM.NET standard, uh, PMP PowerShell core, and then uh, some other topics as well. The agenda will be shared uh, tomorrow. And next SharePoint favorite call is a week from now, and then next monthly community call is July 14th. Uh, we already have a topic suggestion on that one in generally. Um, in general, we know that we have a lot of community calls. Um, reach out uh, or join on those which are the most interesting ones. But that's it from our side. So thank you very much and have a great Tuesday. We'll try to follow up on all of the questions in the chat uh, slightly later on as well, if there's anything which we didn't answer. Um, and thank you for the presenters and uh, thank you for all of the feedback from everybody who is joining the call as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll be back. Thank you. Bye, everyone.